Matt, after many delays and many promises and a lot of lot of waiting and a lot of hesitation and this happened and that happened and the weather got in the way and oh my God, the airplane's not here. We got to fly this thing far. Interesting airplane because first of all, we had three full-sized adults on board and camera gear. And darned if we weren't doing a thousand foot a minute out of California and boy, what's the ambient like 90, 95? Yeah, it's a pretty hot day and we're at sea level 100 feet, so we're pretty low, which is nice. But uh, you know, the beauty of the turbo is that performance will carry through at higher altitudes. God bless the 914. <laughs> exactly, it works. Let's talk a little bit first about what the Sling 4 is really designed to do. How was the market generated? You had a solid little two place that worked very well as an experimental or as an LSA. We're getting you know really good reports on it and all, but stretching that out, turning that into a four place and still doing it on less than 120 horsepower, that kind of stretched credibility. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the, the fact is that many people do want the capability of a four-seater. A two-seater is a fun airplane to fly. Four seats means you can throw a bunch of luggage in the back. You can throw two other people in the back and luggage. You can throw some golf clubs in the back. And you can really go on a trip with more than just one other person. And many people want that capability. And what we figured out is that with this very special engine with the turbocharger and with a constant speed prop, we can get performance and efficiency out of this airplane to basically be alone in a class of economical four-seaters, but maintaining the true capability of a four-seater, but much less expense and much less operating expense. Let's talk about the airplane a little bit from the dynamic standpoint of ground and flight handling. I found on the ground you've got a direct connect nose gear steering. While it's a little bit on the stiff side, it has no mechanical breakaway per se. It's a somewhat linear force gradient. And at the same time, it doesn't require an awful lot of motivation to get what you're looking for. And it's very obedient. On top of it, braking was very good. There wasn't a whole lot of grab or for that matter, any dissymmetry from one side or the other. And the aircraft on the ground handles quite agilely. Yeah, absolutely. What we find that people are wanting more and more is more direct control of all the flight and ground controls of the airplane. Gone are the days of sloppy cables controlling everything. Basically, it takes a bit of getting used to something that is that direct, but when you get used to it, you realize that's the only way you want it. You want to put a direct input in and get a direct response. From a flight handling standpoint, we took off a Torrance, practically zilch wind, and if anything, it wasn't exactly favoring us, to say the least. Brought power up to 100%, made sure that everything was stabilized and the engine was reading well, and then brought it up to the 115 horsepower level, which of course were limited to five minutes or so. But with everything on board and climbing out and eventually settling in in the 8085 arena, maybe a little faster sometimes, we were seeing consistent numbers in the 900 to 1,000 foot level, hot day, granted sea level, and on top of that, not exactly a favoring wind condition. Yeah, absolutely. This is the thing that's most surprising about this airplane because to many, the sound of a 115 horsepower engine is puny. But what they don't recognize is that 115 horsepower delivered, fully delivered using the constant speed prop and the turbocharger is actually a very reasonable amount of horsepower to get an airplane of this weight, which is 2,000 pounds max gross roughly, off the ground and, and climbing at a very, uh, a very acceptable rate. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Now, we went out over Long Beach Harbor, did a little bit of maneuvering. One of the things that I noted that was, first of all, that any roll input was significantly improved by just the lightest bit of yaw input to initiate the roll cycle. Pitch was light, maybe just a tad on the light side, but at the same time, you've got a well-defined static profile and pitch and a very positive dynamic cycle. At the same time, though, because of the lightness in pitch, when we were doing a number of pitch cycles stick free, the pitch moment at that time tended to override it a little bit till it corrected, but stick fixed, of course. It was pretty obedient. 
Roll-wise, when we were doing steady heading and steady bank side slips, it was pretty obvious also that the airplane was very positive from both static and dynamic profiles. And you managed to build a very stable, but at the same time, light, fun to fly, not ham-fisted, oh my God, it's you know 80 pounds of this or that. And you can do everything in this airplane with five pounds of pressure. Yeah, absolutely. And the credit, of course, goes to the designer, Mike Blythe. And they, of course, spent considerable time working on things like the handling and the stability, which was something they didn't want to accept if it was anything less than the best. Because after all, we are catering to the pilot community and we want a pilot airplane. We want an airplane that's fun to fly. And because of the size of the cockpit and because of the fact that it's a four-seater, it can be easy to forget how light it is, at least a thousand pounds lighter than most four-seaters out there. So it takes a bit of a while to get used to the fact that it is quite a light airplane still, even though you are carrying all that load. From a performance standpoint, we were able to, depending on where the prop was, look at it between 118 and 121 knots, indicated about 130 true, and six gallons an hour. That's insane. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. Basically, 120 knots indicated, and of course, you know, go up to altitude, your true airspeed is going to get to 145, maybe 150, because you're able to maintain that indicated speed much more than normally aspirated. So it really means you can go places and burning six gallons an hour of car gas, if you can get it, uh, means that your cost per hour is, is less than a fifth or a sixth of, of a comparable four-seat airplane with a big engine. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Now, the slow flight regime was very nice. Uh, when we, dumped, we uh, slowly uh, got to a point of full flap, 50-55 uh, knot indicated uh, arena. The thing that was fun about it is that we had a very solid, moderate amplitude, buffet, high frequency, very centered and no dissymmetry. As a matter of fact, I could rock the rotor a little bit without any problem. It didn't want to slide off to either side. And even with, you know, two, three pounds of rudder in there and good solid stabs, it would yaw into it, but it would not crank over. Uh, it would obviously take a significant yaw at that point to differentiate it or to take it out of the regime it was in. Uh, but additionally, the fun part of the whole thing is that with full flaps, it just really doesn't want to stall. It had a pretty slow pitch buck, not that well defined, but it just kind of wanted to sit there and sink it about three, four hundred feet a minute. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it really is a difficult airplane to stall, and when it does stall, it, it's very well behaved. It, it's basically a non-event. We came back into Torrance. We were getting hammered. But once again, the airplane handles very well in that particular regime. No aberrant Dutch roll tendencies. It slips really, really well. I love the way that's set up. There was no buffet through there at all. It didn't want to go anywhere. I had a really nice steady heading side slip just working my way back into the center line. I was a little bit left as I was coming in. And the slip really solidified the approach and allowed me to get rid of a little bit of altitude that he kept in the bank as I was coming in over the houses. In ground effect, it's a floater. Not a huge floater, but what you do there, kick a little bit more slip into it, spill some of that air, present a higher drag profile. But on the ground, it sets up very nicely, and that last one or two feet, there's such a nice ground effect cushion on it that it's going to be really hard to screw that landing up. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And with a 32 feet wingspan and with the high lift wing that it has, the fact that it does slip to the landing as nicely as it does is great because getting down in this airplane can be a bit difficult. Full flap landings is the way to get it down. Anything less and it'll use up a lot of runway. Overall, you've got a stability and control profile that's delightful to fly. A little light in pitch overall. I like where roll is. I love where yaw is and I think they work out fairly nicely even though there's a bit of a dissymmetry there. But as long as you lead everything you're trying to do, especially in hard roll with a little bit of yaw, you're fine. It's a light four-place airplane that flies so much better than its size or its power would otherwise allow it to. I'm impressed. Yeah, absolutely. And this is why we want to get as many people into the airplane as possible and load as many people in the back whenever they do. 
because when people experience the performance with it fully loaded, uh, they recognize what this airplane is, which is a true four-seater, not just a marketing ploy.